Good day ladies and gentlemen and welcome to our third video in this series about grade 11 probabilities. Now this video is going to be a two-fold video. First of all we're just going to look at multiple events. So this is Mr. VG and thank you for joining me in this video about multiple events. But the second half of this video is also then going to focus on tree diagrams. In grade 11, our focus of probabilities are two events, two choices, or even three choices that are working in on one another. So when we have a look at multiple events, you as the student or someone that's going to write the exam have to decide, you know what, what kind of tool am I going to use? So the first option is going to be a tree diagram. So when we have a look at a tree diagram, that is what this video is about. And the second tool that you are going to get or be able to use is a Venn diagram. The third one is a two-way contingency table. Depending on your teacher, how nice or how nasty your teacher is, they might or might not tell you which of the tools they are going to expect you to use in the exam. Usually we kind of give you clues, but sometimes we just give you an open-ended question and say, solve it. Let's have a look first of all at tree diagrams. Now tree diagrams in my experience are the ones that the kids struggle with the most of the three options because you kind of there's a lot of implied knowledge inside of tree diagrams and also secondly it becomes a bit complex. So what is a tree diagram or when do we use it? We use a tree diagram whenever there are events that follow one another. I flip a coin, roll a dice. It could be raining or not. And if it rains, then it affects whether I win or not. That's an example. Or if I go, if I do well in the first test, how will it go in the second test? Two events that follow on to one another. Now, the two events, ladies and gentlemen, could either be dependent on one another or independent. We don't know. And we are not going to worry too much about whether they are dependent or not in this video. But in this video, we're just going to look at a very basic tree diagram. I flip a coin and I roll a dice. Now, if I flip a coin, let's have a look. How many outcomes are there? There are two outcomes. What if I roll a dice? Okay. Whoop. Let's first look at the flipping a coin. So this is now making an assumption, ladies and gentlemen, that there is going to be a coin flip happening first of all. And if I look at flipping a coin, I could it could either land on heads or tails. If it lands on a head, so in other words, I flip the coin and now I my outcome is a head, which means I'm going to walk along that line. How many options are there or outcomes are there if I now go and roll the dice? Well, there are six outcomes. So in other words, I could either have a one, a two, a three, a four, a five, or a six. Which means if I look at the two events combined, I could have a heads and a one, or I could have a heads and a two, a head and a three, a head and a four, a head and a five, and a head and a six. That's literally walking the road, I like to put it. So a head and a one, or it could be a head and a two, a head and a three, etc., etc., etc. 
But that's only if I land on a head, first of all. What if I land on a tail? If I land on a tail, that means now I'm walking this road. What are the possible outcomes for the rolling of the dice? So that is, again, going to be six different outcomes, which means I could have a tail and a one, a tail and a two, a tail and a three, etc. So how many outcomes are there? That is what tree diagrams are all about. Tree diagrams are amazingly useful because they show us how many outcomes and what are the possible outcomes. Actually, when I studied actuarial mathematics, which I loved, hey, oh man, that was beautiful mathematics. We used tree diagrams even in really complex mathematics, okay? Really complicated mathematics because it shows us that there are 12 outcomes and it actually helps us to get the possibilities of those outcomes. I wish I paid more attention when I was at school to tree diagrams, but probabilities were not such a big thing when I was at school. Let's have a look at two questions in terms of this simple tree diagram. Calculate the probability. Oh, I see I misspelled the, the, there we go. Calculate the probability of getting a head and a one. If I look at my possible outcomes, there's only one head and one, which means the probability of me getting a head and a one is the number of head ones divided by the total number of outcomes. So how many head ones are there? One, but there are 12 outcomes. But ladies and gentlemen, please pay attention to what I'm saying to you now. This is crucial. The only time that this works, where I say I've got one head and one, is if all the outcomes, their probabilities are the same. What if I've got a loaded dice, for instance, and the probability of a head is a bit bigger than the probability of landing on a tail. Well, then I can't use what I just did. So what I would advise you to rather think of is walking the road. So what is the probability of getting of the dice, not the dice, the coin landing on a head? Well, that is a half. What is the probability of when I flip the coin that it lands on a head. Well, that's one out of six. So to get to that one out of 12, we can say rather one over two, that's a probability of a head, multiplied by the probability of one um, over six. Let me just quickly go back. I went ahead on the video. My apologies. So to recap, if I want to get to that end point, which is a head and a one, I go and I say the, the probability of a head, and I multiply it by the probability of a one. So one over two times by one over six. That is the safer option in terms of probabilities, especially later on when the probabilities are not independent. So the outcome of your first leg will affect the outcome of your second leg. Let's have a look at the probability of getting a three. Now, there is not just one option. There's actually two options. So I could get a head and a three, or I could get a tail and a three. And here is a very, very, very important thing, ladies and gentlemen. The moment you hear the word or, or the moment you think of the word or, you must think of adding those probabilities together. The moment you think of and, so I'm walking this road and that road, we think about multiplication. 
So let me just write that down. Or I'm going to look at adding and I'm going to look at multiplying. That is the way that, especially with tree diagrams, we work. Now, please don't confuse this with the union formula or independent formula. I'm just talking about I can have this and that, or I could have this or that. And this is very crucial, especially in metric uh, probabilities. So let's have a look. What is the probability of getting a head and a three? Well, that is walking that road of a half times by one sixth. The probability of a tail and a three is again a half times by one sixth, which means it is one over six. I just type that in my calculator. Wham, bam. Thank you, ma'am. That is your answer. Ladies and gentlemen, I encourage you to dive into this, to grab hold of it, because tree diagrams are notoriously difficult. In our next video, we're going to look at more exam practice of tree diagrams. I want to show you another example of a more difficult tree diagram. So have a beautiful and amazing rest of your day, ladies and gentlemen. Go and be awesome. This is Mr. VG signing out. Keep well. Cheers.